This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Good evening, Indiana. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Right now at 7, we're working to get answers on a potentially dangerous situation after some Hamilton County moms came to us about this issue. The two women say both their kids have slipped and fallen at splash pads in Carmel Clay Parks getting seriously injured. And they believe algae on the splash pads are to blame. Erica Perone's four-year-old son went to the hospital two years ago after slipping at the Monon Center Water Park splash pad. I just remember that hollow sound when his head hit the concrete and it bounced straight off the concrete. Um, and my child, who never says I'm tired, because uh, kids are like that, came over and lay down on a bench and I immediately knew we needed to go to the hospital to get that checked out. Another mom told us her daughter slipped on a similar substance at the West Park splash pad. Both moms reported the incidents to the city, but they say they were ignored and just want to make sure that no other kids will get hurt. Today, Carmel Clay Park sent RTV6 this statement, saying in part, its splash pads are managed by certified aquatic facility operators who complete daily inspections of splash pads. The city also says it has an established cleaning schedule for the pad surfaces to help address factors that could cause slick conditions. Now at 7, we're taking a live look outside. As you can see, the sun is getting ready to set. It has been a hot day as we take a look from our, tam uh, from our tower camera. It's a beautiful evening out there. Let's check your forecast right now with meteorologist Kyle Mounts. Kyle, fill us in. Yeah, a little bit toasty out there today, but beautiful as we're getting ready for that sunset officially here at 747 this evening. Our temperature right now, 83 degrees after making it to 87. We flip those numbers around. That's where you sit right now in Kokomo at 78. It's 82 in Martinsville. Nice and quiet on Storm Team 6 radar and the satellite as well. That's good because here shortly you'll be able to check out the International Space Station flying over central Indiana. It will start at 846 this evening in the south-southwest sky, pass about 45 degrees overhead and disappear five minutes later to the east-northeast. So you'll look for that shining light moving across the sky and great weather for 80 degrees at 8 o'clock. will be into the lower 70s and mostly clear by 11. Uh, Kyle, thank you so much. RTV6 working for you to help get problems solved. And downtown residents came to us saying that a construction project has kept this downtown sidewalk closed for several months. And today it is finally getting some work done after our story this week. We headed out to the corner of Capitol and Market this morning to find these crews working on the issue, which has been forcing pedestrians to walk in the street. This is a busy spot with people trying to get to the red line and the Capitol. When we first asked officials about this issue, they said that construction would not be complete until October. We'll let you know if it's completed ahead of schedule. Marion County is set to get more money next year to improve city roads, but it's not because of new funding or budget changes. You see, the money is from a discrepancy made back in 2012 when Indianapolis and state auditors calculated how much the city should get for road projects. And that amount is determined, by the way, by the geographical area of the fire department's coverage. You see, IFD's coverage area has increased after absorbing some townships fire departments, but that increase was never reflected in the funding determination. We asked the auditor why her office and, the, and Indianapolis did not realize until this summer that a change needed to be made. I think what happened is we have a new administration in my office, we have a new administration in the city's office, and we have 30 years or more of history. And so, you know, every time you get a new administration change, people look at current law and apply it to the best of their ability. She goes on to say that Indianapolis could receive as much as 80% more money than last year for road repairs. Now, outside of Indianapolis, other cities and towns will see an 8% decrease in their road funding. RTV6 is going to stay on top of this story as we learn more about the funding mistake and how it will impact all of central Indiana. Now at 7, we have new and alarming numbers on the serious health conditions likely caused by vaping. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the number of these respiratory illnesses jumped 50% in just one week. There are now 530 people affected across the county. The majority of those are in men between the ages of 18 and 34. Seven of those cases 
were deadly. Today, the CDC said they are still trying to figure out exactly what is happening. They advise everyone to stay away from e-cigarettes. Tomorrow, millions of students want to make their message heard at the climate summit approaches for the United Nations. Students all across the country plan to take part in a walkout tomorrow. They're asking world leaders to do more immediately to address climate change. School districts in New York City, San Diego and Seattle say they will allow students to walk out. Some new tariffs have some stores stuck between a rock and a hard place. Big companies like Macy's, Walmart and Target are trying not to pass their increased costs on to you. The vice president of the National Retail Federation says with so many options out there, U.S. shoppers are used to competitive pricing. They won't be too happy to see prices surge, especially around the holidays. The companies have said price hikes are a last resort. Thousands of people have been stranded by high water in Texas. As you can see, as 13 counties there have declared a state of disaster. And the rain is expected to continue in areas that are already dealing with extreme flooding. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the latest on the damage and the rescues underway right now. With water up to mailboxes, this is the only way out of some Texas neighborhoods today. The water was this high, up to my waist. It was dark and it was scary. The remnants of Tropical Storm Imelda dumping more than five inches of rain an hour in some places, creating a dangerous flooding emergency in areas around Houston and Beaumont. Imelda is now the seventh wettest tropical cyclone in United States history. The storm toppling the roof of this post office, injuring several people. At Houston's airport, this bus submerged. Wherever you are, please stay where you are. And staff at Beaumont TV station KBMT finding the story right there in their own newsroom. I didn't think it was going to be like this. <laughs> Drivers across the area left stranded by the rising water. The rain has been relentless and we just can't escape. It's like we're on an island here. Rescuers spending the day on airboats and dump trucks, according to Harris County officials, already bringing more than a thousand people and pets to drier ground. And today, cleanup after the storm spawned this tornado. Whoa, dude, there's a tornado literally next to me. That tore through the community of Baytown. Everything's destroyed, but everyone's alive. Most of the flash flood watches and warnings are set to expire tonight, but some of the hard hit areas could get even more rain tomorrow. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Uh, coming up on the news at 7, they were fed up with being left in the dark. So they asked RTV6 to hold the city accountable. Now a neighborhood is getting light. That's sort of coming up. But first, let's check your forecast with Kyle Knox. Hey, Kyle. And the rain on the way, we certainly need it, but it may not be the best timing when that wet weather could impact your weekend plans. You're watching our TV6 News at 7. Peace of Homes, every Sunday morning at 1130. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Tonight, new changes on a stretch of a busy Northside Avenue that's been in the dark for months. RT6 first told you earlier this month about the lack of streetlights between 38th and 42nd streets on College Avenue. You see it right there. You can hardly see really. Concerned neighbors asked us to find out what was going on after they say they got the runaround from Indianapolis Power and Light. Now IPL told us the lights were out due to the red line construction. Well new today, volunteers from the Neighborhood Association and local leaders delivered 500 solar lights to residents along that dark stretch to make a difference. You can see when we share your stories, people can come together and make a difference. Thank you to all those folks. Of course, as we look at your forecast, I was really surprised to hear today as I was walking onto the set mm -hmm. that we are in a drought when I can recall May and June. They were very wet. Super wet. Yeah. And what then happened? we kind of shut the rain off okay. and really have here in the month of September, hardly any rain has fallen. And so now we're starting to get some of those drought mm. conditions you can see developing around Logansport near Lafayette and also into Jackson County in the Seymour area. And those abnormally dry conditions are also increasing in coverage. Good news, we've got some rain chances in the forecast here. Very spotty tomorrow. Most of us are not gonna see any rainfall until we get later in the day on Sunday 
into Monday morning. We'll talk more about those rain chances in a second. Right now, though, no rain out there. We are still dealing with the summer warmth. 80 degrees in Crawfordsville. It's 83 in Muncie, Indianapolis, and 84 in Columbus. Tonight, our temperatures settling back down into the lower and middle 60s under partly cloudy skies as we'll have a little bit of a southwest breeze, only around 5 miles per hour. But tomorrow, it will help to bring a little more of that humidity. It's still not going to be real tropical feeling out there, but noticeable with temperatures making their way into the middle 80s once again. 86 in Indy, 87 for your afternoon high in Bloomington, and 86 in Muncie and Richmond. Here's a check of TrueCast, and you do notice we'll have increased cloud cover throughout the day on Friday, but you really don't see a whole lot showing up here as far as any rain. So maybe a stray shower for a couple of the football games. Even if you see that, it will not last long. 87 and dry on Saturday. Great outdoor day for you. Just a little bit on the warm side. 84 on Sunday, and we'll see those showers and thunderstorms developing, especially the afternoon and evening. Your seven-day planning forecast now as we put it all together. Those highs going to continue to be in the 80s through the upcoming weekend, and then as fall arrives, so does the cooler air. A few showers lingering into Monday morning. Our high 76 degrees Monday afternoon, and we'll keep those highs a little more seasonal for this time of year in the middle 70s, and a chance for a few showers and storms the middle of next week. Let's see what the rain brings. We hope it's just nice and steady. Just nothing. a little bit. Just a little bit. Just yeah. enough to get rid of that drought. That's right. Kyle, thank you so much. Coming up in our nightly hiring Hoosiers report, what to do before and during and after a job fair to make the most of a new career opportunity. Plus, is retirement just a golden memory? More baby boomers are working late in life to make ends meet. That's all ahead in hiring Hoosiers next only on our TV6. Toyota. The only name you need to know. Hiring Hoosiers is all about connecting you with jobs, skills, and training. And when you have no idea on how to fix a computer, students at the McKenzie Center right here in Indianapolis will most likely have the solution just for you. Through their information technology program, students work all aspects of computers. They're focusing on problem solving and troubleshooting different operating systems and keep computers secure from viruses. There are different levels of the program. They'll learn to take apart and rebuild computers all the way up to software software skills so they can manage networks. As the years go by, we're more connected to technology, as you know, and teachers along with students agree that more people are needed in the IT field. We are in a deficit right now because of all the uh, evolving of the things in technology. Um, it's just a, a huge demand. It's been huge. Like even my mom and dad said that they're jealous of my opportunities. It's really just great. Uh, students will get multiple certifications along with dual credit, which is great, setting them up for college focusing on degrees in computer engineering and computer technology. So last week, our Hiring Hoosiers career coach gave us a step-by-step -step guide on how to make sure that attending a job fair would pay off just for you. But what do you do before and after a job fair is also very critical. Our Hiring Hoosiers career coach explains now at 7. <laughs> So when you're at the fair, you want to arrive early. It's better to wait in line outside to get in than waiting in the really long lines at each table. You want to prioritize who you want to visit. Start with the ones that are less interesting. I know that's a little backwards, but if you do that, you can practice that elevator pitch and really hone your skill there. And then by the time you get to the ones you really want to talk to, you will feel really good about what you're doing. Be patient, courteous, and respectful. There are so many people at these job fairs. Remember that they are there too, so you want to be respectful of their time. Don't monopolize the recruiter's time. Ask if you can continue the conversation at a later time. And then always check with the employers before taking the things that are on their table. They might have a limited supply. It's just a courteous thing to do. While you're there, you can network. This just simply means talking to people, talking to others, exchanging business cards, attend a workshop if uh, one is available. Basically, you want to show initiative by introducing yourself, shaking hands, and um, you know, using that research that you've done beforehand. Smile, stay positive, and ask questions. Formulate some of the questions that you want to ask employers. They'll be impressed that you took the time to do that. 
Take notes while you're there. Use those pens and notepads that you brought and jot down who you spoke with and always collect business cards. So after the fair, you want to follow up. Immediately when you get home, compile that information that you took in your note taking and the business cards. And then you'll use that to send like connect requests on LinkedIn or to send thank you cards that are personalized or emails. Really, it's preparation and follow-up that are key to a successful career fair. Uh, doing those things are going to enable you to have meaningful and memorable conversations at the career fair and establish good relationships. Don't forget that pen and don't forget to smile. Thank you to our career coach, LaDawn Weston, for more helpful advice from our Central Line career coaches and all their daily profiles. You can go to our website, Hiring Hoosiers. Dot com. You know, right now, a record number of people in the baby boomer generation are working well beyond retirement age. Our Kai Beach is looking into why and finding out what can be done to get you into a better financial situation. Having to work quite literally until they die. <laughs> At age 68. Thanks, Audra. Stuart Smith is still working behind Ladies, the bar. Can I get you another yes, white cloth? Making a little extra money. He retired a few years ago from a career in health care. And even with Social Security and retirement checks coming in, you don't look like a runner. He still wants more of an income. Enough money to keep the wolves from the door, I suppose. Uh, like I say, I'm doing this just for the extra cash. We're learning there's now more people like Smith in the workforce. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports about 20% of Americans over the age of 65 are either working or looking for work, which represents a 57-year high. People are uh, living longer life now, though, um, and, and more importantly, they are living healthy life. MSU Denver professor Kishore Kukarni wrote a book on economics. Slowing trend is the new normal. And he tells us with less pensions available, it's not a surprise more people are working past their retirement age. Baby boomers will have to work a little harder uh, to pay for their bills. To find out just how much harder people will have to work, we went to Fidelity Investments. At age 40, uh, we're recommending that someone is saving three times their salary. Ryan Smith is breaking down the numbers you need to know to live comfortably. Saying if you want to retire at age 67, you need 10 times the amount of your salary saved, which can include your 401k, bank account, and any other savings. It's really taking the time to, to plan and make sure uh, that you were able to put the pieces together before uh, it's that, that point where you're trying to make the decision. That's Kai Beach reporting. Thank you so much. As we continue our hiring Hoosiers focus, tonight the city of Indianapolis is offering help to college students who are at risk of dropping out over their finances. The local group India Chief says local universities see a significant number of qualified students drop classes due to money problems. So Mayor Joe Hawks had helped announce today a new grant that will help students at IUPUI and Ivy Tech Indianapolis. The India Chief's completion grant will help cover financial shortfalls affecting your ability to pay academic costs. Programs like this help students like Marina, who has seen her ups and her downs. I kept on pushing. I kept on, you know, trying to get there to the end. That's everybody's dream is getting there to the end. And I only have five classes left. And with this grant, it has helped me to be able to schedule and take these last five classes and graduate this December. And keep this number in perspective, India Chief says the city of Indianapolis alone needs about 215,000 more adults with job-ready credentials to fill jobs requiring college degrees. And, you know, and this program could not come at a better time. The class of 2018 officially has the highest debt in the history of the country. A new study shows that the average student who graduated last year with a bachelor's degree owes $29,200 in student loans. That's a 2% increase over 2017. There's a bit of good news in all of this though. The year-to-year -year increase has gotten a bit smaller. As we head a look outside, the sun is getting ready to set. Stay with us. Forecast is next as the news at 7 continues right after this. For Santa Fe, visit your local Hyundai dealer today. And just a few minutes ago, RTV6 celebrated with several of Indiana's 
unsung heroes, really the best of the best. They all recipients of the Jefferson Award for Multiplying Good. RTV6 proud to tell a story every month about a Hoosier who goes above and beyond in public and community service. The Jefferson Award, started by former First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, has been awarded to more than 63,000 people across the country over the past 50 years. Congratulations to all of the Hoosier recipients and make sure to celebrate the next wave of heroes every month right here on RTV6. And we are also celebrating tomorrow is finally Friday. Yes. And the forecast is looking good out yes. there. Partly sunny skies, temperatures again into the 80s. So we're going to hold on to summer here a little while longer. Yeah, officially we move into fall on Monday, and that's when the temperatures get a little cooler. And thanks for watching our next newscast tonight at 11 with Mark and Amanda. See you then, and have a good evening.